Airbnb in 2022, is it dead? So me and my business partner tried doing Airbnb for two weeks and I wanna share with you guys our results so far, some pros, some cons, how much we've put into the business and also how much we've earned so far and what our calendar kind of looks like and where we ended up you know, investing into and why we chose that place, all right? So I hope you guys are gonna enjoy this video. Let's dive right into it. Please, if you're excited for this type of video, please drop a like, smash the like button, comment down below, and then share this with a homie or two. All right, so if you guys are ready, let's get into it. All right, so let's start off with some details first. So our Airbnb started right around June 9th, right? So we got one property, it's a single family home. It's a three bed, three bath in Colorado. So we chose this because the numbers made sense, right? So we hired people to help find us properties that would be good for Airbnb. They found this one, we ended up taking it, and then we ended up writing it out. So the we're gonna go down to the numbers of this Airbnb as well. So it's, uh, the house is about like 2,000, a little over 2,000 square feet. Um, and again, it is a three bed, three bath, and we're paying right around $3,300 a month for the rent and also the lawn care. Uh, utilities is about an additional $300 a month. But I wanna go straight into what you guys already wanna see, which is our earnings so far. So our listing has been live for just two weeks. And as you can see here through our computer, we have already made over $15,000 in bookings already. And it's only been live for two weeks, which is absolutely insane. We're very, very happy about this. So we started like about June 9th. So we missed about over a week worth of uh, bookings. So we could have gotten definitely higher than what we have here. I think that we could have probably hit closer to $10,000 for the month of June. July, we still have, there are still bookings available, so we still have to weigh that out. And then August as well, it's just getting started. So $15,000 total so far. Now let's look at the how the calendar looks. So shout out to my editor, he's gonna be blocking out all these people's pictures and everything, but you can see here, we didn't have anything uh, in the beginning of June because we started on the 9th, we went live, and the next day we started getting bookings from there. But basically immediately, the entire month of June after that just got booked up, right? Now we're going into July. Most of our July is booked up. We still have about, let's see, four, seven, about nine to 10 days left that we um, can still book out for July. So I suspect we'll be closer, more like eight to $9,000 that month. And then August, we already have some bookings as well, um, but we already know that this is gonna be uh, more open and we're not gonna get bookings until closer to July. So this is how it looks so far. So we're pretty happy about that. Now let's get into the cost of all of this, all right? So here we have a worksheet that kind of entails the investment details and um, the forecasting of our profits and whatnot. So this is basically showing everything that goes into it. Uh, shout out to Michael who made this sheet. Uh, he's also an Airbnb guy that I also learned from. But he made this whole spreadsheet um, and gave it to his students and whatnot, and we got it. And uh, yeah, so it's been helpful to kind of just see what our numbers look like. So let's get into it. So uh, investment details, we had a security deposit of about $3,000. And then the amount that we actually had to pay was uh, 33.95, which is like the first month's rent. Um, and then our actual uh, total cost of each bedroom or like just furnishing the entire place with handyman, with all of the interior design and everything like that, so when it comes to furnishing the place, we spent just about $30,000 in total as far as like the entire investment in. Uh, this is actually including the cost of getting the property found and also getting the interior design done and the handyman in. The actual cost of furniture itself was actually about like 17,000, 18,000 and the rest was just like paying to outsource all of these things to be done for us, okay? So our actual total investment into it is about $36,000. Now our property is doing an average daily rate of about $300 and we've been occupied for at least 80% of the year or the months. Um, and so our annual revenue is gonna be just about $90,000 or about over $7,000 a month, right? And this is probably actually, we're gonna estimate that actually can be a little bit higher. It's gonna be more like $8,000 a month or more closer to the six figures in revenue annually. Um, but now we're gonna move on into what our actual cash flow would end up being, right? 
So based off of here, this is all of our expenses for our monthly operating expense. So this is like insurance, this is like water, utilities, um, like tools that we're using for the Airbnb as well. Um, and then like co-hosts and whatnot, uh, property managers. So we are spending just about a thousand dollars in monthly operating expenses. And this is for basically the whole shebang of like all of our expenses and um, just all these extra little things that we have going on. Now, if we take a look into our net operating income, you're gonna see that we're making um, just about $6,000 and then so you can see here, our actual monthly rent is gonna be about $33.95. Again, this is not including utilities. This is just for the property itself. So we're spending about $40,000 a year on the property. So our actual cash flow is just under $3,000 a month. Uh, and we're making a little over $30,000 a year with this one property, right? And this is giving us over a 90% cash on cash return on our money. So almost 100% cash on cash uh, return on our money, right? So that's really, really great. And this kind of just shows our payback period throughout the years of like when we're gonna make our money back and then when we're gonna be seeing just straight up profit. So after the first year is probably going to be like a break even, we might be able to hit that even sooner, maybe within 10 months we can get our cash back. Um, but then definitely year two and, a, and on, we're just straight up cash flowing, getting pure, pure profit after that. So, so the chart speaks for itself. This is what we've made so far. This is the progress and what we expect to be making with our Airbnb property. So we know that it works. We got one property, it is profitable so far. So that's enough for us to actually go in and do more. So we have two more properties on the way that we're gonna be getting into. One that we're owning and the other one we are also going to uh, uh, rental arbitrage as well. Um, and if I didn't explain this earlier, what we're doing is actually renting out buildings uh, or houses or apartments and subleasing them to be able to Airbnb them ourselves, right? Uh, so we're taking both approaches. We're gonna be owning properties and also uh, arbitraging properties as well. And that's our game plan. So the pros is that we saw that this is working. This is a cash flowing business um, and it is very scalable. Now, the downside of this is that it's not so much passive. It's not very passive. Like you can do it remotely for sure. I live in California, my business partner lives in Texas, but our properties are in Colorado, right? Very manageable to do remotely, but it does take work. You do have to work. So we have to take the time to hire cleaners. We have to have the time to actually respond to all of our customer inquiries and make sure everything's good. Um, and the fact that we weren't able to see the property or know exactly what's going on because we never, we've never seen the property before in person. Never, we've only seen pictures of it, right? So we're operating it completely remotely. So it's a little nerve wracking because we don't know exactly where everything is. So when our customers ask us questions, it's harder for us to answer. But we've been able to hire um, our property manager who's a virtual assistant to be able to assist us in seeing everything over. Uh, and handle any inquiries or anything like that and, and handle any disputes or problems or uh, issues that customers might have, whether they're like check-ins or, or just like things around the house or things nearby or whatever, our property manager is helping us through, but it doesn't come with, you know, without the consequences, right? So there are a lot of issues where we've seen like, we're making sure like, sometimes the cleaners don't do a good job. So then we have to make sure that they do do a good job, that they send pictures in. And then we also have to make sure that we're answering all the questions and, and making sure that guests check in properly. And if you don't have automated messaging system, you're gonna forget that you have to send, you know, check-in reminders to your uh, guests and everything and check out, um, have them check out at a certain time too. You have to make sure that they do check out. So there's a lot of things that you have to go on, which is important why I recommend making sure you have an automated messaging system as soon as possible. And then also making sure you have a property manager that can help you as soon as possible, right? This is gonna make it a lot more passive and a lot more um, manageable for sure. Um, but it definitely wasn't like super, super passive, but it was definitely doable remotely. That's what I would say is great about this at least is it's scalable and you can do it remotely, but it's not super, super passive. Um, we still need to work on these systems at hand for it to become passive. At, right, at the moment when you're first starting, it's not gonna be passive for sure. Like anyone who thinks this is only gonna take like a little bit of work, that's not true. It's gonna take a lot of work up front first, but just like anything else, once you build the systems for it, it can be passive and it can be more profitable as well. So that is basically our experiences with Airbnb so far with the first two weeks. 
and uh, it's had its ups and hats down. We've had check-in problems, we had cleaner problems, but it's been resolved and we've been able to manage it very well. But if you guys have more questions about this, you want more video updates about how our Airbnb business is doing, then go ahead and leave some comments down below. But yeah, this is what we're doing so far. This is what we're doing right now. I'm still doing the Amazon business. I'm still mentoring people about Amazon FBA, but this is our new next side hustle, right? But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave us a thumbs up. Please give us some love. Spam us in the comments. Give us some love. But um, yeah, that's about it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and I will see you guys in the next one. All right, peace.